it had to be like April or May of 2001 because I was the manager of the club and I couldn't believe that you played there. <laughs> like, and then Eleanor's like, what are you talking about? It's Dom. And I'm like, what? Dom Irera comes here? <laughs> Honestly. And then she was like, do you want to meet him? I'm like, she was like, you're the manager. You're going to have to meet him. But she was very, very nice. And she introduced us. And yeah, that was 2001. Yo, Dom, over here. Hey, Dom, hey. Uh... Yo, Dom. Brian brought up the fact that he's seen a photo, an old, an old headshot of yours, where you had the same style, where it was real puffy, I guess. I probably Which, puffed it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to switch it up. It's I'm very so proud of my dandruff, by the way. If you ever, I collect it. <laughs> do you, did, do you you do guys, did you watch a game in Phillies? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's unbelievable. This is such, such a beautiful time when they win and all the races come together to riot as one. <laughs> did you see some of the videos, Dom, of what the people were doing? I don't know about you, but I like to turn over a car every once in a while myself. The thing is, they they riot if if they if they win, if they riot if they lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So true. Either way, it never ends good. It's not going to no. end good. Well, when you drink from nine eight at nine eight o'clock in the morning, I don't know. Do you ever see these guys with the tailgating? They start drinking at eleven o'clock in the morning. Well, the uh, the the mummers are like that. Were you, were you guys yeah. uh, mummers people at yes. all? Yeah, yeah, we were mummers. Do we look like? I was. Wait up! We got the mummers today. <laughs> what are you, Did... Overbrook? What was the big one? Uh, the yeah, I think the fancy <laughs> division. The fancy division. They just dance around, no, no, no nothing. Just the song behind them. <laughs> Uh, I, I never understood that being like I grew up close to Philly, but not in Philly. It, it, it's a weird thing from the other side of the bridge that we don't really understand in Jersey. Where did it it's come called, from? It's Whoa. called getting away from the city. <laughs> I'm sorry I cut you up before. I know you won. Dom, you, I'm so you... Excited, I'm so excited to see you guys. I cut you off. Oh, uh, thanks, Dom. We're, we're excited to see you too. Tom, you're you're you were you, real real talk. You were never associated with the Mummers before, ever. Not, I mean, so they strolled they strolled by my house once. Where's your where's my dad? He's out there dancing with those other guys. You you, you never got the hype. You always thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> no, if they're happy, I don't care. I, I didn't think it's ridiculous. It's another way of getting out of the house, and but you got to dance for it. <laughs> There's a crazy. What is there? A crazy division? I forget the division. No, they call uh, it comics, fancies, string band. Oh, we got a professional mummer in the house. Apparently, I, I, I was involved with the mummers over the years. Really? We, 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 yeah. Confess it. Confess <laughs> he, he was. Up. He was in yeah. the the wench brigade. That's the one he was in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought wenches are. The comic division, right? Look it no, up, Ryan. No, there's, I, I, there's 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 comic. Yeah. Wench Brigade. Yes. Fancy costume. Um see see how he's he's string, he's string. Proud of himself. He's he's got his <laughs> he's prepared for his mummer talk. String, you, you just throw it away. String string band string, and string band. And and and, and fancy fancy brigade. Uh, you, 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 <laughs> you, you you don't think there's a lot of talent in that parade, Don Maria? I don't know. I mean, it's a good walk. I mean, <laughs> what do they get for that anyway? They get like money or they get a trophy at the end if they win. Oh, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I pick up a lot of babes with that. Hey, how you doing? Oh, shut up. What's hey, are you a mummer? Mm. <laughs> Ooh. I'm trying. I'm trying to find a picture of what the uh hey Don, <laughs> Don, looks like. if if you told somebody in LA what a mummer is, no, how would you explain not. how would you how would you ex <laughs> how would you explain it? How would I explain it? I yeah. can't explain it. I can't even explain it to you here. <laughs> you explain it to some strange girl. <laughs> My father was a mummer. My grandmother was a mummer. Oh, it's all it's all men, right? His, his well, sister now, was a now, mummer. now well now women are involved. They're they're allowed. They're allowed. 
No, well, no, no. <laughs> no you, yeah. you're, yeah, set, wow. you're, you're setting me up. I don't dog. want no chicks when I dance. <laughs> I, I want room to spin. You understand me? <laughs> Keto, take it easy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you're going to piss off your people, Dom. I love those guys. Hey, listen, Brian was looking up the statistics and the data of this podcast. He's a number Is it data guy. Data or data? <laughs> Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? It depends. Are you in the are you in the the fancy and, or the, or the string brigade? He, he he said seventy five percent of our listeners come from this uh, northeast Philly area. I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful thing that they do for themselves in the city. I wish to continue to flourish. I wish them the best. Anything I said here to for is it's not uh, true. It's uh, just trying to be a jerk. Is, is, I, that, I, is, I, I apologize to anybody thinking of being a mummer that was a mummer or presently in the mummers. <laughs> that little the, fucking Dago, what is he? <laughs> I don't know. I the see the old Don Marrera would have never apologized for an offensive joke. I don't know you to no. be that way. This is a little out of character. The joke, the joke was I was acting offensive, <laughs> offended, or whatever the fuck I am. I mean, look, let him, let him, let him be. Yeah, just, <laughs> get me out of this, Brian. Do no, some well, fancy, just do like some fancy work, graphic work. Well, just like people parade in the street when the when when the Phillies and Eagles yeah, win. But they don't par- they don't parade two stops up front and two back and then spin. They don't do that. <laughs> it's They're none of that, man. <laughs> You had Ronaldo. You had some friends that were that that were out, didn't you? Do you have Do you have some guys that were out there uh, walking through the streets? Of course, the night the Phillies won. Yes. No, no, no. It, it, make, just... it makes Philly Philly. You wouldn't be Philly without that. So, uh, yeah, that. but yes, at, at, yeah. at twenty two, twenty three, it, it it makes sense for someone like me that's from here. I'm th- I'm thirty six years old. You think I'm gonna go out and get bombed when I got shit to do the next day? I got a seven month old daughter and a wife i'm gonna i'm gonna go out and get messed up till three in the morning i have a drink i have you can, a cigar you ever hear of a dry mummer you ever hear of a dry mummer there are some you call them old drunks no, i talk- didn't find that offensive me and the people that we're, are listening we're talking about when the phillies win the parades do you call that a parade how they all go to broad street and and start yeah. like drinking and smoking <laughs> They don't. They they prayer bound, but somehow they get too drunk to find a place. They will end up chicken chicken and peas for free free chicken steaks. Yeah, chicken. chicken. Uh, no, I mean I, I hope they win. I hope the Phils win. Huh? Houston's tough, Dom. That other team's tough. Maybe they'll get the Eagles to beat the shit out of them before the game. Or the Eagles fans. You know what's amazing about it? Like all these women. My and my family are rooting for the Phils. Like they're, they're really happy about it. it. Makes them happy. I'm I'm happy. You know, it's easy. Yeah. Every twenty or thirty years, they make it to play to the playoffs. That's about it. <laughs> well, God it's twelve. It's, it's twelve now. Oh eight. No, am I doing the math right? They won in oh eight. So uh, it's, it's fourteen. Been fourteen years. Fourteen. Fourteen years. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't know if they're going to beat Houston. Houston's a really tough team. They're really tough. But the kind of money that people are paying for tickets. I got a buddy that went to the game. He sat in the 400 level for game five, the night they won it all. He paid 1200 a ticket. It's a once a lifetime in this thing. Leave, leave well, the four, why is everybody, below, why is everybody say once in a lifetime to justify a bad decision? You paid 24. You know, 80% of the people that are listening are from this, this neighborhood. You know. <laughs> He's dead to us. It's it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's true. It's true. I don't are. know. A lot of the people that are buying tickets and merchandise on my Facebook feed, they're the same people complaining about inflation and gas prices. So that's all. It's an observation. Dom Herrera, I'm just observing. That's all you I'm doing. You don't do really funny comedy, but you observe funny characters <laughs> being done by other guys. Why has it got to be guys? Oh, you, got something, God. You, got, you got something against the girls? No, I, I cherish them. <laughs> and, and and behold them. Behold All them. I need is my, my Cuban heels now because I'm starting to shrink rapidly. You notice I shrink from, from show to show now? I'm, I'm now we'll, 
I, yeah, yeah. I, I, th I thought it was just the seat. You're uh, no, it ain't the seat. I'm, st I'm standing on it now. <laughs> so sad. So when they, they play Tuesday, uh, the uh, Phillies play Friday, and, and the, then the, 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 the Eagles. The Eagles, gonna... the Eagles are back off a of bye. We're taping right now. It's Tuesday night. So I hate uh, I hate the Sixers. By the way, right now, the Sixers. The, the Sixers. Uh, ooh, they, they they fucking suck. Well, that's another sport that guilty i'm guilty of it dom like you with baseball just too many too many games so i usually don't start watching until like after the all-star break did you I hear that thing in your, your did you feel it you went what's that hear, brian did you hear that no 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 what did you get a sound coming through i heard <laughs> you got oh, a cat you got, you got you got a cat in there <laughs> wow <laughs> now it well, might have might have been this thing or something would have been my, I, uh, my I got a I, I got a text from our uh from our secret guest. Let me. He's oh having yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's no, having a, like, he's it, no. He looks he's like in? he's here. Yeah, yeah. You're oh, ready? all right. Yeah. Dom, you ready for our uh our surprise guest this week? Yes, I am. Uh, he's a local guy like me and you, Dom Uh, from Delco. Uh, Ooh. Steve Simone. You're uh, Steve Simone. Everybody. What's not to love? What we look at that face? That pudding. <laughs> Steve, very funny, very clean. You can yeah, take he, the kids there. Matter of fact, you don't want to take anybody older than the kids. See, Steve, is he here? <laughs> he's not I'm coming. trying. Oh, there yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Steve, look at your head. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was trying to get you guys on my computer, but now I'm, I have to use my phone. Oh, look how yeah. gigantic my! I look like a candy apple. Just like, like, it's going back giant and forth apple though. A stick, do it like this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you just might have to switch the little thing on your phone, you know, that switches it for, to turn. Uh, Tom, look how fresh Brian gets when you ask yeah. him about the computer. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, this really little, this little thing. You know? I, don't, I, don't, I don't like his tone, Dom. <laughs> He's a little condescending. Like, they'll wait. They have to... to wait. They don't know how to do any of this shit. <laughs> we're, we're t t t t t technical dif difficulties. You know what I'm why talking about? Your, why don't you do your, two, two your funniest minutes from your little act? <laughs> nothing without electricity. Just, I just don't want Steve to be sideways the whole time. See how he he, he looks like he's the wrong way. He, oh, he was, just very, very casual. No, Simone, I think he has a. Uh, you have this. Right. You, have, you have the the screen lock on your phone that prevents it from when you when you wrong. twist it this way. You know. So I got his settings. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't even get my stupid laptop to work. <laughs> it's all right. So it's you, not, are you it's on tour, pal? Was I? Uh, I'm doing a lot in Florida, to be honest with you. There's a lot of work here. It's good. The sunshine. State. You deserve it, man. You're a good comedian. Thank you. you. What I said. Don't anybody say I was nice, all right? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't let that get out of this room. Steve, if you have an iPhone, just just swipe down. It's a little lock icon on here. Uh, I got that. Yeah. Oh. So you just got to make sure it's it's not highlighted, and then just twist your phone, and it should work. Like that. Oh, look, look at look this! At, uh, all the every new every day. He, he popped this cherry, everybody. Look at this! You're <laughs> an right. animal. Simone, how are you, my friend? So good. This. How am I? The Phillies are going to the World Series. That's oh, all I... here's a guy. Hey, Dom, you were talking about people parading when they win. Uh Ooh. when the when the Eagles won in 2018. I'm at the bar with my father. He's annihilated drunk, embarrassing me in Chickie and Pete's in South Philly. I look over to the left. He's doing shots with somebody. It was Simone. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even drink I, now, right? I think I did have one with Pete's dad. <laughs> no, but but he didn't know it was my father. I just walked in. I oh, went, what random. the fuck are you guys doing together? Random. Really? So they both came I, out I, that day. I hand huh? to God. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember your dad came in. He was all eagle geared out, and he still had the ticket around his neck. And I'm like, were you at the game? <laughs> we're, and we're, we just started to talk. Were the throw-up stains still on his jersey? <laughs> Dude, it was did joyful. Kiss, did you kiss him? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I flew into Philly, and the craziest thing was, I thought it was going to be chaos. It was the day after the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. I, went, I, I was in L.A. I flew to Florida to watch it with my dad. And I just remember that feeling like, did we really do it? And I remember I looked at my dad and go, 
I think it's the end of the world. The Eagles won a Super Bowl. <laughs> like, you know, and I wasn't even kidding. My dad looked at me and he goes, you might be right. Like, we didn't know how to handle the win. And then I was like, all right, I love you guys. I'm flying to Philly to go see everybody. But I remember the airport that day and it was eerie. It was so quiet. Yeah, like, no everybody one... was walking around like it was a dream. Like, did this really happen? So then I was like, what's going on? And I went to Chickie and Pete's. I'm like, I'm sure there's going to be a party there. And it was kind yeah, of quiet. Was... Then your dad showed up. <laughs> and then it became no, more No, you fun. were just hanging with some random Eagle fan drunk guy. You didn't know. And then it, I walked in. No, what it was, in all honesty, we started to talk a little bit. They're like, what do you do? And I'm, I'm always embarrassed to tell people I do comedy. <laughs> like when you're not famous and you do comedy, it's like. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do they, do they, that's do they why, pay you for that's that? why I'm embarrassed. Like nobody asks Dom Irera what he does for a living. They're like, "Oh, there's the legendary <laughs> Dom Irera." Legendary my ass. Like, What is this guy here to fix something? And um, I was like, "Well, I do comedy." They're like, "Our son does comedy." But but and as we're having that conversation, that's when you walked in. That's it was crazy. like out of a movie. That is crazy. That is crazy. And and before that. I think I, I didn't see you for like a couple of years. The, the, couple years. The, the last time I seen you before that was when I met up with Eleanor at the comedy store and we met, we, we kind of met in person for the first time. And you gave me like a whole walkthrough through that whole building, which is like crazy how that, that, that place is assembled. There's like four different showrooms. That's all I remember. I haven't been there in years, but ain't it yeah, a it's crazy? Like a- it's a crazy setup like that, right? The comedy store. Yeah. It's like a giant old, almost like a mansion. It's huge. There's no place like it. Like there's three active stages. You have belly room upstairs, the main room, which seats like 400. And then the original room. Wow. And I remember I give you a tour of everything. Cause I always try to be nice to all comics. But then when I found out you were from Philly, I was extra nice to you. <laughs> and then I remember you were like, should I move out here? And I was like, I wouldn't do it. Remember that talk? <laughs> yeah. Well, he lives in Florida now. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dom, was the setup at a comedy store always that way? Like four different showrooms? Was that the? I intent? don't know. Steve, they should, Steve, there's some pictures in the back. You can see when it was the Nero's or what was it? Was a, a yeah, big mob place? Right? Yeah, it was Zero's I, I nightclub. Oh, it was, they, it was, they first it was, bought the original bar and then they got the the rest, right? I don't know. It's yeah, it was actually. I think it was built in like 1919, and oh, then. Wow. It was some, yeah, it was something else. You just else threw that out. You just, you just have no, you have no, you know, I'm a nerd. I, was, I read the books. <laughs> I was reading about the comedy store for years before I ever even went out there. Like, I still can't believe I got to spend 20 years there. It was incredible. It was such a rock. 20 rush. years. 20 years. I remember meeting you. It had to be like April or May of 2001 because I was the manager of the club. And I couldn't believe that you played there. <laughs> like, and then Eleanor's like, what are you talking about? It's Dom. And I'm like, what? Dom Irera comes here? <laughs> Honestly. And then she was like, do you want to meet him? I'm like, she was like, you're the manager. You're going to have to meet him. But she was very, very nice. And she introduced us. And yeah, that was 2001. Yeah, it's it's like it's like surreal, like being from Philly and like knowing Dom. Like, mm-hmm. and I know you don't, I know you hate hearing shit like that, Dom, it's but, true. but, but like, I used to watch the Dangerfield special at my, at my gr- grandfather's house with my uncle. Who's like the fun uncle that would like, let us watch shit. We weren't supposed to watch. And we would just dot. I, I wasn't allowed. You were, you were too dirty for me to watch at my grandmother's house when I was like, 12, 13 years old. I was, I was dirty. Your grandmother had a nice big <laughs> Italian jugs. God bless her. God rest her soul. I thought you were a doorman, Steve, when you started there. I did every job. It was a bouncer. Did you get in any fights as a bouncer? Yeah. Uh, you remember how nuts that city was right after September 11th? We didn't go out. You fucking brought us food. You saved our lives. I'll always owe you. You know that's the moment. Thank you. Wait, but what ha- what happened? You got food. What happened? Well, that's not, but September, not the COVID disaster. The other time the world was a disaster. September 11th, Mitzi closed the club down for a couple of days. Uh-huh. And I remember being there on September 11th. She called me because I 
Pauly Shore got me a job answering phones there because you had a showcase to be a door guy, but anybody could answer phones. So it was almost like lower than a door guy on the totem pole. That was the entry level job. Yeah. And then I went from answering phones and they found one of the managers like passed out in the walk in fridge because he did all the whip. He took all the whipped cream cans and did whippets. So they needed a manager for that <laughs> night. And they're like, hire, hire that kid that's got all the energy on the phone. And Paulie, Paulie knew me because he found me at a comedy contest in Philly. Uh, I won a comedy uh, contest at the TLA on South Street. So I was kind of new Paulie. I knew well, I didn't kind of. Well, Paulie brought me in the club. So his mom sort of trusted me. What's that? I said, don't have an argument with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I went from a Paulie got me a job answering phones. Uh -huh. And then they bumped me up to manager right away. But I knew I didn't want to stay there because Mitzi didn't hold on the managers in those days. And I just wanted to be a comic. And if you were a door guy, she would see you as a comic. But if you were a manager, she would see you as a manager. Mm -hmm. So I, I managed for less than a year. And then I bumped down to door guy. And then I needed money. So I would do any job. I would do phones, door, the ticket tape ticket taker they call it the cover booth and then i did there was an old parking lot guy chewy that worked there six nights a week but he had one night off it was okay, monday yeah, nights right. i tried to be a lot guy i was terrible at it uh so i parked cars oh they opened up the front bar for a couple i bartended managed Jesus Christ, bro. i worked i was the assistant town coordinator i was mitzi's personal assistant i did every job there Wait, you were as a talent coordinator. You passing people if they? they... No, I was the, oh. there was a the talent coordinator was this kid named Duncan Trussell. It was an unbelievable oh, yeah. comedian. Yeah, love Duncan he Trussell. Be, he's, yeah. yeah, he's fantastic. Never heard of him. Oh uh, yeah, his so, podcast is is pretty wild. Also, he's so, awesome. I was show. yeah, I've been a big fan of his for a long time. He's so cool. So on Mondays, Duncan would need my help. To that's when all the comics would call in their availabilities. Right. So I shared an office with Dunk Duncan and I would just write down what days they were available. That was my whole job. That and hang out with Duncan. It was great. That had to be a lot of fun. He seems like he's a fun, fun guy to be around. Oh, he's awesome. Everybody at the comedy store was fun. It was great. Come on, tell was... us who the dicks are. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Dom. Who's the, <laughs> asshole? Who's the asshole comic that used to hang at the store? Who? Really hung at the store. Who's the biggest asshole? <laughs> Don't biggest fold on the questioning. Steve, you're not gonna be you're gonna bad mouth anybody. <laughs> no. I have a mutant ability to see the best in people. It really is a mutant no, well, ability. Well, I'm messing with Dom because I told him a story when we had Vic DiVadetto on about a headliner that bullied me when uh... I ho when I hosted in Albany six years ago. And Dom wow. called me live on the air. He said, say the name of the act. I said, I'm not putting him on place. And Dom called me a pussy. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, could, you could still change that, you know. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> Get it to slip out now. <laughs> That's when she, you know, I, you know this, that I, when I auditioned there, Steve, I auditioned for, um, you know, I was, I was here to do Star Search. So I mentioned, and I get, I get it, I get the whole thing, right? I go back to New York, I'm feeling good. One time, geez, they, she you're paid regularly? Yeah, man, big deal. I go back she, into a month, she, she didn't remember anything about me. Oh and my was, gosh. I had the audition all over again, but Gary Shanley was there. He knew me for some reason, and that's how I got it. That's incredible. Took yeah, you one but, audition and a shambling word. It took me eight years for Mitzi to finally say, okay. Yeah, but look at the difference in our ex. <laughs> That's a, levels of talent, <laughs> charisma, I'm just natural saying. ability, charm, wittiness, yeah. cleverness. Dom, I did a week of shows with Simone. He he did an hour clean every show and killed. He's great. Yeah. Like I, crazy. Unbelievable. Simone, how about the show we did with the kids? The kids were playing in the sand in the front row. Oh yeah, at Soul I was Joel's. like, I was like, yo, bro. I know you said they were clean shows, but Jesus. yeah, but you did great. <laughs> oh, not well. Situations like that they make you stronger. I feel like you know. Keep yeah, going. absolutely. And like that's the stuff I'm doing now. Let me set this up. All right, that's better. 
So, so what do you think the hardest gig uh, you guys have had to do was? Is it is it stuff when you have to be like clean? Is that is that the hardest, well, the, or is it? I, I think there's like a sixty dollar a night. Maybe it's a little before your time, but they, they would start dancing in the middle of my in Iraq at a certain time. So like you're up there and uh, my father, my mother, blah, 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 and then you hear that, and these people are fucking dancing now. You know, <laughs> you ever try get, you ever try and get like dancers to laugh or to oh. listen? <laughs> Would they do that? Like, was it like uh, they would have like dinner and a show, and then dancing yeah. afterwards? And you were the you were the show before. Mostly, it's the, the, the music, you know, the drinking. They're all they're all coked up at the C eighties, you know. <laughs> it was just so fucking hard. Excuse me, can you, can you just give me the, the rest of this record, please? So, <laughs> you've been to those gigs? See, no, no. Like most of the stuff, I've been lucky enough that most of it was just clubs. I've done. Like I just got asked to do a, a private show, but then and the guy's super cool. But he was like, "Now, are you gonna need a microphone?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna need a microphone. That's all I'm gonna need." But that's what I need. You should tell me. Make sure it has speakers with it too. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> but what about like um like uh maybe more like challenge like cha challenging maybe hard's not the right word but like chat like what makes a a show challenging? I guess is it like you lose the crowd early, you got to bring them back, or or what? I had people playing backgammon <laughs> in front of the stage, and, and, I, and they were going shh to me. They were shushing me. I said, "I'm a comedian. I'm supposed to make you laugh. Fuck you. Up. <laughs> Fuck off." That was pretty hard. I remember before moving to LA, I'd only done a little bit of stand up, uh -huh. but one of the shows was a bar show in Carney's Point, New Jersey, with no stage, no light, nothing. And I, as I'm doing my act, two oh. girls get into a fist fight, and one of the girls threw another girl on the pool table and just started to smash her in the face. He's just... That's sexy, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I guess nobody wants to hear about my family ordering pizza on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Simone, did you always work clean, or is it something that just happened no. as you developed? As I developed. Um, I always wanted to. I always wanted that because I grew up watching comedy with my family and my parents were so cool. Like they let me watch everybody. They let me watch, you know, prior, Eddie, it didn't matter. They let us watch filth. But I remember my dad, like if it started to get too bad. He would look at my mom and he'd go, uh Oh, this is getting a little bit adult. And then like, they'd either cover our ears or they changed the channel. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always thought I would wind up becoming a writer or a producer before I, was good enough of a comic to work clean. But I'm like, all right, I guess none of these other opportunities are coming. And I kept on doing stand-up, kept on doing stand-up with the ultimate goal in the back of my head, maybe not to be as clean as I am now, but to have the type of act where the whole family could watch it. And then uh, one year I gave up cursing on stage for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I think it's actually working better for me. Like the response was better, not worse. And then um, I did my first album in 2014. And there was probably like four F-bombs on it. But I remember like my parents were like, they couldn't play it for, my mom couldn't play it for her friends. You know what I mean? Because some people are uptight. My parents aren't uptight. But that doesn't mean the world's not uptight. Right. And then uh, after that, I started to volunteer a little bit at Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't famous enough that they just wanted, they would just let me do it. You know what I mean? They liked the fact that I was a comedian, but I also knew people would go check out all my stuff. So I'm like, I better start working clean. And then a manager friend of mine was like, hey, if you come out with a clean album, they'll play it on the radio. Why don't you do that? They need uh, who content. Who, who was the manager? I got to give her a shout out. Nat, Nat Goldberg. She's the best. I owe her a call because that changed my career. Wow. Like that took me from starving to making a living God bless because you, they man. play me a lot on the um, family station. Well, on was, Saturday that, was, was that you that told me that if you if you can if you can work a half hour clean, that's really funny. You'll, you'll never you'll always be working. Was that you no, that but I don't no, disagree no. with that advice. Yeah. And then here's another thing, too. And this is the truth. Everybody at the comedy store was such a strong act. They were so funny that I was like, how am I going to differentiate myself? 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm not as fu- honestly, if Dom wasn't here, I'd say the same thing. I'm not as funny as Dom. I'm not as funny as a Joey Diaz. You know what I mean? But I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, I could be the type of guy where they go, oh, at least, you know, at least he wasn't, a, you know, I could play it for my grandma. And I get that from people. I get like real hardcore comedy fans that love like a Chappelle or Rogan. They go, but I play your stuff with my kids and we all laugh. Dom gave me the best compliment I've ever gotten the last time we spoke on the phone. Mr. Herrera was like, somebody said you were completely clean. He goes, I didn't even notice it. You're just so funny. I was like, can I get that? Can I get that written down somewhere? (laughs) No, it's true. You're the funniest when you're silly. Yeah, I like you. Just let it go. And I don't know. I didn't. Seinfeld said to me one time, Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) He said, sometimes I'm sorry, I, 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 I painted myself in a little corner, but I don't know what to do to get it out. So, you mm. know, he, he's worried about being too clean because they really yeah. turn, they turn on him. I've been, they go, oh, they booed him at the Comedy Magic Club because he was too clean. Wow. Too, he wow. was too clean or too, or too dirty? He was too, 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 clean. too clean. That, you know, they didn't know that he was, you know, they, from TV, they couldn't tell that because well, all the other TV acts did were dirty, you know, anyway. Oh, uh, okay. Got I it. never think of it as dirty and clean. I just try to get funny. Absolutely. I mean, I'd love Ab- to write straight, straight uh, you know, but that's not me, you know. I'm just right. a pig. Yeah, I one of one of the things was uh... because of my cock. <laughs> I have to talk about ten minutes with my cock. You say it after me, Steve, just to get <laughs> my cock. <laughs> he's gonna light it, yo, Dom. He's very religious. He's gonna light a candle for you now. Oh, I will. I pray yeah. for all you guys. <laughs> Closer I get to death, the more religious I get. Anyway, <laughs> great, great show, great show tonight. We'll go to mass next time I'm in LA, Mister Arrera. I'll be in the middle of a novena. <laughs> seven, of them, seven of them get me right into heaven. Steve, do you just ask Saint Rita? She's a miracle worker. Steve, do you miss L.A.? You've been out of there, what, two years now? Yeah, I miss the hang. I don't really, it's sad to see what, it, like, I lived in Sherman Oaks, which mm-hmm. seems to me like one of the neighborhoods that got hit the hardest during the last two years. It's unrecognizable to me. Um, because of that, it is so expensive. Like, it's like 32. I was looking at it because in the back of my brain, I'm always like, well, in a perfect world, I could go back and forth. But it's it's so expensive. It just it just doesn't seem like clean anymore. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I miss the hang. I miss being able to go to the comedy store any night of the week and hang out with 30 buddies. But my friend said most of the people I know have left. And they tell me when they go back, it's still the store, but it's not the same. So I don't it's know. Way, it's waves of talent that go through the store. So it's, you know, two two years of greatness and then nothing for a couple of years. You know, you've been there. Yeah, like great. When when I got there, it was like there wasn't even enough audience to start a show. There was a couple nights we didn't have enough the whole night to do a show. What? There'd be two people in the crowd. What year was that? 2002, 2003. But yet you're very close to to closing. Yeah. We had to do a benefit. Robin Williams came back to do a benefit show because they couldn't afford to put a roof on the building. That was 03. Hmm. Sadness of comedy. So glad we did this. (laughs) Put a theme. (laughs) And I love the people, the mummers. Remember that. I love the mummers. I do. Oh, yeah. We opened up the show talking about the mummers. Hilarious. Yeah. Were you are you associated with the Mummer Simone at all? You're, no, I have the bone de- structure and physique for it, but <laughs> believe it or not, I, I look like I could be a mummer. Like, like being a Delco guy, like did you used to go up there for the parade? Um, it was it was almost like being a Delco guy, like the Mummer's parade was almost like going to Florida. Like <laughs> there's there's levels of cool, you know what I mean? Like You'd come back and kids would be like, like the rich kids would be like, oh, we went to Disney. And then like another kid would be like, yeah, well, my uncle's a mummer. We'd all be like, no way. You went to the parade. Dom, see that? Mummers are, they're a big deal. I come like on. the mummers. See, you're trying to make me look bad, you best. <laughs> I like all, I, li- I like people that strut and especially the mummers. They have a different strut. 
What about the Philadelphia fans that go on Broad Street every time there's a big win? What do you think about that, Steve? What do I think? I think it's great. Like greasing I, up the poles and flipping. I think it's poles. hilarious that the first guy that made it up the poles wearing a Hextall jersey. It's like you couldn't cast that better. <laughs> like the most obscure, perfect reference. Brian, look at Brian, look that up on YouTube. I didn't see that. He had a Hextall jersey? I, the first guy to make it up the greased pole was at first off, they show the cop greasing the pole. He's like on his day off, like had a t shirt on, oh, jeans, gut sticking out with a nine millimeter, greasing the pole. <laughs> and and then the next thing I know, one of my buddies texts me, Hextall jersey makes it to the top. I mean, it was like the lights were still on the field. They hadn't even presented the trophies yet. And and Hextall made it to the top. There's a certain sadness because you're never they're never satisfied. Like to win the Super Bowl. And it's, you know what they do? Instead of saying, thank hey, this is cool. Let's enjoy the moment. They're going, what are we going to do next year? They're going yes. to they're gonna tear this fucking team apart, you know. Here we go. I had a- I got I the video. I got one the of my video. buddies on that. Right after the world, right after they won the pennant, he goes, oh, they're going to lose in five. They don't have the pitch. <laughs> and I go, Petey, just enjoy the ride. I go, enjoy this moment. And then he said something else back. Same guy told me they would lose in five to the Braves. The same guy that told me they overpaid Bryce Harper. They gave him too many years. And I go, Pete, we did it. We beat all the odds. We're here. Enjoy this. Enjoy this right now. And I, I'm flying up to Philly probably Monday just just to feel the vibe. Thanks for the heads up, buddy. No, I mean, I just, bro, I mean, this is like <laughs> no, making kidding. plans today. Oh, really? Yeah. You're trying to go I to a game? I didn't buy my are, ticket yet. Are you trying to go to a game or you're just trying to be up here for it? Both. One of my friends said he was going to get tickets. I don't know if that's going to happen, but. I think I just want to. I have a gig anyway on Thursday. Where are you at? I have to do a show Thursday night, and I'm like, why not? Why why not go t- see my nephews on Halloween, watch the Phillies, and just be there for it? You know. Uh, Don was asking what club. It's um. I'm doing uh, actually a. Re- this is one of the benefits of working mostly clean. I'm doing a a rehearsal dinner. I'm like a surprise oh, comedy at cool. somebody's wedding. Sweet. Yeah. What are you going as on Halloween? I already got my outfit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard of the have you ever, ever heard of a Zorro? <laughs> right here. I like to keep it current. Um, do they trick or treat in your neighborhood in LA? Well, no. Are you no? kidding? They're all <laughs> Russians that hate us. There's what, no, in your, in your, na- in your they neighborhood? Have, really? They don't even have fuck kids. There's no children. There, you you don't have neighborly people around you? They're they're fucking horrible. I mean, really, they're miserable people. How you doing? Like, uh, like, like no one checks on each other. Like during the shutdown no, or the pandemic, die. they would they, they would know you were dead for like two months until I start smelling you. Yeah. See, That's... he chips in. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hollywood. That's L.A. Chew. That's the L.A. way. They're not neighborly. It's huh? not neighborhoods, and it's it's really really different. You know, we knew everybody on our block when I was a kid. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anybody's name. I think the geography also ha- has to play a big part into that. You know, like the way the way it's built, like Philly, the way it's built from the middle of the city, it's just it's just spread out flat. It's just one big ass neighborhood. Yeah, in, in the LA, homes. there's all those you know the hills. You can't live like you can live in Philly, where it's just a row home for ninety blocks. <laughs> you know, well, it's so expensive. You know, it, it really limits the people that can can move. You know, in my neighborhood. We're right across from the park and a minute away from the Hollywood, whatever, with their feet. And you you can't just walk into that. I mean, you know, all the houses are a couple million dollars, you know. Good for you, Stay away from us. (laughs) (laughs) I like to be on the upper floor so I can watch the middle acts scramble for money and food. (laughs) Hey, Steve, did you ever follow? Did you ever follow Dom at the store? I don't think so. No, it's not like that. People really don't care. Oh, I thought it was like a past. Isn't the store you could just randomly? It's a randomized uh, lineup, and then people yes. drop in, so you don't know who you're going to follow that night. No, you never know. And then somebody could just pop in, and then you'd have to follow that too. 
you get somebody like Chris Chris Rock who's like great about it. And there are other guys which I don't fail to name. I go on for I do five minutes. They do an hour. You know, works up the whole night. Best. Yep. <laughs> that was one of the controversies back when I was working the door and managing the club twenty years ago. Eddie Griffin would come in and oh. do five hours. Like that's he, not an exaggeration. There was one the, night where he snuck up on stage before the room was set and just started to talk to people in the audience, and then just stayed. He just thought he was, he, like, he was like a philosopher. It didn't make sense. You know, he go like, we got to stop giving our children knives and, and guns and give them p- pencils and papers. And who the fuck gives their kid a knife and a gun? <laughs> like, how are we going to stop this? We got to educate. Well, no shit. We got to educate. It was like, maybe it was with these profound statements that he thought were, he, he was an idiot. <laughs> He's not a mummer, is he? <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, Dom Herrera with the third call back of the night. You're an animal, Dom. <laughs> Legend for it. a reason. I... Steve, when you uh, are you doing any clubs locally in Philly anytime soon? Or no, I'll reach out to Joel to see if I can do something around the holidays. Um, but yeah, I've been doing like a bunch of corporates. Which is great. Nice. Like for somebody at my level that does not sell tickets, it's no. it's like the only way to make I'm a living. You know? let it, my let it. You're a fucking great comedian. You're, you're the Thanks. Media. But I can't. It's like talking about basketball in front of Jordan. Like if it was just the three of us, I'd be like, oh, I got this going on. I'd be way more confident. I I I've known Dom for over twenty years. I still call him Mr. Irera, and that's like not a goof. That's like <laughs> that's I get nervous. So now I'm looking down at my table. I'm afraid to make eye contact with my phone. (laughs) I saw saw Dom on, I didn't think somebody from Philadelphia could really be a comedian. And I I saw the Rodney thing. (laughs) And then I remember a couple of months after that aired, you were at the Funny Bone on South Street. I was 15 years old. We bought tickets. And my dad had to still bribe the bouncer to let me in. Because it was a 21 and over club, but then uh, it was comedy. Then it was, I just remember the bouncer going, just make sure it doesn't drink too much. I remember him saying too much. <laughs> That's a Philly doorman right there. And then years later. He was probably my- a mummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of those people listen to the show. <laughs> We'd like to remind you of that. And uh, then when I was working for the Eagles, there was, I think that club then became the Laugh House. And at the time, the owner was an Eagles fan. So I got to know him and I always wanted to kind of do comedy. So I'm like, I'd done a couple open mics at the Laugh House and I knew the guy. And now I'm working at the Eagles, whatever. And I go, look, Don Myrera is coming in. Is there any way I could get tickets? And he was like, absolutely. Cause I'd hook him up with Eagles tickets. There's a line down the block, completely sold out. There was Eagles football players in line to see Mr. Irera. Really? Wow. Oh, we lost uh, him. I don't. I don't. I don't know if his phone. His phone might have died or something. You lost me. No, no, no. We got you, Dom. We lost Steve. Steve just. Steve just dropped out. Did I text him? Ah, yeah. See if he answers. His. Uh, his, we're, his phone we're, we're live. Died. That's that. That's what. I'm, oh yeah, here he is. He's coming back. Oh, thanks, God. <laughs> we, we missed you so much. He's coming back. Hey guys, I'm, I'm having the operation to get them these lifted. You'll be able to see my eyes again. Oh, did you did you schedule it, Dom, or no? Well, I had the uh, cataract. Not that I'm, uh, I had that. That was fucking horrible. But people go, you know, it's not that bad. I'm thinking, all I wanted to do was run and cry <laughs> at, at the hospital. But it, it's all right. But the, yeah, this one's going to be fucking weird because I said, look, don't make me look like I'm surprised all the time. <laughs> you know, like two big eyes, like <laughs> kind of scary. But I don't want. This is what I have now. I look like I did heroin. <laughs> 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 let yeah, me but, tell you from the inside of this the inside you know how great uh, this i i always think i could have made this better even in that seven minutes i thought oh i looked at mistakes there's no joy in it i'm still miserable but about, I, you know, about, about your stand-up you mean yeah i mean i'm, I'm not my cup of tea you know? <laughs> i would advise you not to go see me you're so no. full of shit come on dom no i i i mean we had we've had a couple of good shows together, but I told you that last one. I I, I hated that one. I mean, I, I would go back because of the money. 
<laughs> it's it's um i mean I, I get that though as a artist not not loving what you do all the time you know <laughs> loving the work you put out is that what you mean yeah i mean as far as these guys have seen me since they were kids and i don't think i mean i try it but it's you know i don't think i've been anything better or worse i'm like i really don't like my act but, but when you went Dom, when you when you got in the stand up, when you got in the stand up, where did, I mean, was the goal to to have a, 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 a I career? Just, I I just wanted to get paid as a comedian. I thought that was the coolest thing. I didn't want to be sorry Seinfeld. I don't want to be anybody. Whatever came with it, you know. But um, I mean, I th I think I've been very fortunate. I mean, that that Rodney thing was incredible because you see, everybody has their own thing and they can have their own show. There was mm -hmm. nothing else but in, in comedy on, on HBO at the time, so everybody saw it, or, or they watched nothing. Right. So that that made it really. We were all celebrities in a in a day. I went to Atlanta on a Tuesday. The place was packed. I go, why are they packed? I go, because you're here. I go, what? What did I do? <laughs> it was it was Rodney. Oh, you, you, like you you at the time you couldn't comprehend how big of a deal that I had no kinda, idea. Yeah, that set was on Rodney Dangerfield. In 1987, and what, like, what channel was that? Was HBO, right? HBO, yeah. Wow, but people were. It's amazing how powerful it was. Every all, every every line was in order for that, though, because the the timing and the talent. <laughs> there was a lot of talent on those shows, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, Robert who, Schimmel. Who Robert was on? Schimmel, who was on your lineup that night? Dice, um, Robert Schimmel, um, Lenny Clark. Um, Who's the guy? The really funny guy. He's he's about twenty five. He died early. Cigarette. Head, Hedberg. No, I love Hedberg. Sam yeah. Sam Kinison. No, it was uh, Bill was, Hicks. Bill Hicks. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he we was, can hear you. Oh, he, but it, Bill Hicks was just a terrific comedian, and he was nervous, you know. And this guy Rick Machina goes, "Go talk to him." He, he likes the moon's you. back. I've been listening. Yeah. I've this is just like being 11 years old and I can hear all the cool kids having fun. I'm like, guys, guys I'm, outside. I'm outside. Let me in. My mom made my mom made cannolis for everybody. Brian, <laughs> Brian, we're not editing any of this, by the way. We this never is do. like, oh, and guess who called? It was Brett Ernst, and he kept on calling, and I thought I was hitting the red button. I hear oh, no. Put him, put, put him on Are you speaker. Be in Philly, and I put him on Zoom. Put send Brett him. on speaker. You should, put you Brett should, on speaker. You should, you should send him the link. <laughs> Oh, he would love to do this podcast. Did you tell Brett we were on the podcast? No, I was trying to text him. I kept on uh, hanging up because I thought I was jumping. I'm whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, Brett's doing uh Soul Joel's next, next Thursday. Week, right? He he asked me if uh I was gonna do the show, but I got something going on that night. So you uh, nice. Mr. Big Shot. No, 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 no. It's nothing I want to make public on the podcast. That's, all. That's always good that we have stuff you can't plug. <laughs> <laughs> and what time will you be there if you actually go in there? Dom, how maybe, about when I asked you? you saved our lives with the Dom, <laughs> how about, Dom, how about we were doing a show in Philly and I asked you, hey, you mind if I start posting the flyer? I know we're like a couple months out. You're like, you know, I think that's a terrible idea that you're going to try and get people to pay for tickets for my venue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's funny. Mm. What, what, what were we talking about? You're talking about Bill, H Bill Hicks. What, 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 I, what, what, what was that you were saying? No, just uh, we had Carol Leifer. She's you've seen her in, um, in Seinfeld. Remember her? She man, she was really good. Anyway, I didn't yeah. name them any good comedians. But I said, said that was so good. I, I, at the time, I mean, well, Dice like Dice, he he fucking went and did the Madison Square Garden and all that shit. Right from being on that show, you're saying? Yeah, that same year. So yeah, Don Tennyson did that year too, right? Uh, I I, I uh, filled the Madison Square Garden too. Oh yeah, and Cher, I worked with her, so she she worked with me, <laughs> but she always wanted to go on last because of the wigs. <laughs> but I did. I worked with I worked with Cher for years. So Dom, working with Rodney was that like oh, was, was that fucking... was, was that someone you looked up to before you became a comic? Or yeah, I thought because he was the best for person for a minute punchline, boom, boom, boom. You know, he just fucking machine gun. 
It was so funny. He said to me, we knew he was going to die, you know, go right to that. He, <laughs> says, he, goes, he goes, can I do anything for you, kid? He goes, I said, Ronnie, you did it all for me. Maybe uh, you're my friend. That's uh, so cool for me. He says, you're all right, kid. You're all right. He goes, you can't, not, I can't do anything for you. I said, you could, you know what you could do? You could close your robe. You know what? <laughs> I, I can't eat and see your little purple balls squishing on your leg when you're eating. <laughs> Oh, and he never laughed. He goes, "That's funny. That's funny, kid." I just closed the legs. I don't worry about it. And it was just up there alone with him. That was pretty fucking weird, you know. Yeah. Did you guys ever meet prior spending time at the store? Both no, you guys? no. I, I auditioned for him, and Barry Sobel and Damon Wayne's were before me, and they both did uh, twenty-five minutes. Supposed to do ten minutes each. I was so fucking pissed off. So I go up on stage, <laughs> and all I did was lay into them. And I get off the stage and Randy goes, look, kid, you're funny, but all you do is lay into people. I can't hire it on that. I said, well, see me again when I'm in a better mood. And then I, improv I auditioned at the improv for him and I, and I got I got the gig. I had no idea of the numbers that you have to beat out to get the gig like that. You know, I just said, oh, yeah, I'll get it. Well, it was, you know, there's only seven of us. But he had other, I mean, he had Sam Kennison, a lot of people that were hot. And Kennison was so fucking funny. But I used to bless myself whenever I saw him. He say sacrilegious shit, <laughs> you know, Steve, and I, you know, also I'm afraid of that shit. Mm -hmm. Domine, yep. Domine, Domine, you're all Catholics now. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, I was actually watching some Kinnison stuff uh, the other night. They have a bunch of uh, Kinnison and and Bill Hicks stuff they put out on on Netflix recently, like re-released -re it on on Netflix. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. I got to see a lot of stuff I've never never seen before. S Simone, when you did your first TV spot for com it was Comedy Central, right? Was it a similar thing? You had to audition or submit a tape? How how's that work yeah. now now compared to when Dom when Dom did it? Well, I think it's still still a process for everything, but when Mr. Herrera did it, it the whole world saw it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like that day, like if you saw HBO comedy on Saturday and you went to school on Monday, everybody's going big PD, little PD, orthopedic PD, Joey bag of donuts. I, I like I, I, everybody I, saw it. I, I don't think I don't there's think you. there's anything. I don't I think even if you had the biggest Netflix special, people are probably still only going to see a two minute clip on their phone. They're going to see it on Instagram. They're going right. to see a clip on YouTube. Yeah, it, it was, was a, different. It was a different time. It was different. Yeah, it meant more. Even, you know, um, from like the production and the thing, I've kind of like looked into old stats and, and even like, like TV shows back in the 60s and 70s still get more viewership than just like the best stream would get would get now because it was like there was only one place to really watch, you know? Correct. Now, even though people are getting these like, you know, monster Netflix things, not as many people are seeing it than would have seen a late yeah, like set in 19, 1980, you know? Yeah, it's true. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's spread it, it's spread it out. Yep. Agreed. But I spread it out. See? Ah. <laughs> Where's your Moses now? But it's still a challenge. Like one of my goals was comedy central because when I got to the store, that was sort of like the tonight show didn't mean as much. Yeah. And Comedy Central was like right before, when, at least when I was doing open mics and stuff, podcasts weren't where it was at. Now it's like, you know, you have a TikTok account and an ins funny pictures on Instagram. You could sell tickets. Mm -hmm. um, but Comedy Central was still kind of like getting a button. You know what I mean? And the first guy to put me on Comedy Central was Gabriel Iglesias. And I didn't get it the first time I auditioned. But the following year, he invited, he liked my audition so much that the following year he had his own comedy festival mm. in Phoenix and he invited me out for that. And he's the nicest guy in comedy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, like, right. he's I like, heard, a yeah, yeah, I heard he sold out Dodger Stadium, right? Twice. Wow. God bless. Yeah. Like, yeah. not only is he like ridiculously funny, super famous, but I'm just telling you, as a human being, wow. he's awesome. That's he's awesome. like the most generous, kindest, compassionate dude. And like he flew me out to Arizona. It was my first comedy festival. And he saw my set and he was with his manager and they both looked at me. They go, you want to do the show? I'm like, what? I didn't know it was an audition. Mm -hmm. 
and then they I he put me on Comedy Central. I remember I legitimately got a standing ovation after my set. I was like, what is going on here? Steve, they were just leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but then but then they told me it was kind of funny because I did the first set clean, but they said I was all over the stage and the cameraman uh, they, had, they had me come back and do it the next night too. And it still went fine. But I remember Gabe telling me he didn't want me to do it clean. Cause he it was he was like, they're gonna air it on Comedy Central. He goes, but people are gonna watch it on YouTube. And he was like, I think if you're doing a bit about watching Willy Wonka as a kid, the dirtier you make it, the funnier it is. Because it was about me being angry that Charlie never got a golden ticket. I'm like, where's the justice in this world? And it did, like, I got to open up for Gabe. It started to open up some doors. But my point is, it was a challenge just to get it. Then when my buddy Ari got a Comedy Central show, this, the network didn't even, even though he wanted me for the show, first year, he couldn't even get me on. Wow. And then the second year, I had a great audition. He could, I couldn't even get the audition. Because they already oh. had 30 comics they wanted him to choose right, from. Right, 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 right. And then the second year, he had a little more pull. I did – it was a storytelling show. I, I tell stories. It worked great. But for whatever reasons, they only wanted me to do the digital play. And Ari was like, look, that's where everybody's going to watch it. But he goes, it's still not the same. He goes, if it's up to – if it were up to me, I would say no. He goes, you, your story deserves to be on Comedy Central. And the whole thing was like so much of what I do really is for my parents. You know, like I work clean because right. I want my mom to be able to show her friends my stuff. Honestly, that's the truth. Um, that's the real reason why I work clean. I want my parents to be able to like, this is our son and they're not embarrassed. Um, and then. I forget what I was going to say. No, about about how the uh, it wasn't aired on Comedy Central. <laughs> yeah, that was the, that, that was part. it. It was I just wanted them to be able to watch it on TV and go, uh, oh, that that my kids on TV that means something to them. Cut that. And last then, part, <laughs> right, all right, go ahead, Steve. <laughs> That's it. Just <laughs> get on TV was a big deal. You're you're I I seen a set on YouTube of uh jfl did you do did you do new faces or you were just showcasing uh -uh. i never did new faces like i never had I, I was i was just gonna sound like rocky i'm like i never had a manager uh <laughs> i didn't have a manager or an agent i remember just never getting new faces and having really strong shows but yeah but, then, but new faces has a category now where there's Eight comics that are unrepped, and then there. I think I don't quote me on this, but there's a class of comics that are unrepped, and then there's a class of comics that are right. It wasn't always right. that way. It, no, it wasn't always uh. that way. And then I auditioned for New Faces twice, did well, never got it. And then years later, I didn't get. I started doing open mics at the store in 2000. I didn't get Montreal until 2017. Damn. But they bumped me up. My first set ever at Montreal was a gala show in front of 3,000, 4,000 people. And it worked great. Cool. Yeah. Is that is that the one that's online? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's great. Dom, you got a tons of JFL sets yeah, on, on YouTube. Like, tons. Like, 02, 2010, 2004. Like, did, did, were you headlining events for Just was, for Laughs? I was, I was, I was there, like... I got so many things out of that. At one one year, I did like three TV different show, three different th TV shows, uh, the football show. I don't know if you ever saw that. It was called cool. oh, Offsides. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple other, but it's uh, it was before the all the executives used to have to go there. Now with all this electric, electricity, you guys, we could do shit like this. Right. But they, they don't really get to meet you, and you know, it was a different world. I, mean, I really feel not to be like a cowboy about it, but it was like. I liked it better because you meet people and stuff. But uh, if you if you go with the, the these what, what you call how you call it, Kenny? Podcast you know, podcasting. Yeah, no. If you do streaming, if, anybody can have a show if you just do it. Just it's, it's amazing. Like and then they got, they got <laughs> even Louis, even Louis even C. you, Dom. <laughs> even me, Louis Louis C K. You know he's he's great great comedian, but also a great businessman. Yeah. 
Yeah, he he bought his own. He sold his own tickets. Like you know the story. He, he he's doing a, like a new show now that he's, he's filming. He's, I've, been, I've been watching clips of it on on Instagram. It's awesome. He, apparently, oh, he's so, he's so fucking funny. You know what? I just want to, his nickname. We used to do this skit in Montreal. It was a. Uh, he had the cunt. I can't think of it now. <laughs> Cunty, Cunty McShitballs was the name of a character he's doing. He come. I'd be on stage in Montreal, and he come in with the guitar. And I uh, wait a second, everybody. I think we see we got a, a celebrity in, in here. Cunty, is that you? <laughs> Cunty. And he going like, it's Cunty shit, shitballs, everybody. And I said, hey, he's got having a song. He happens to have a, a guitar with him. And then he do his songs. But I love that fucking name. It's like the grossest you can be. <laughs> Try and say it after me, Steve. Mick, Mick. Shit balls. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> you can't even say it, can you? I don't want it. You could, but just say it once. I want to say, I want to tell my Louis story when I had to follow him at the comedy store. Oh, wow. <laughs> It was like 2013, and he's on top of the world. He had just gotten back from selling out the garden. Can you imagine like the, the money one. he lo- Oh, Go ahead, Steve. Sold out Did the you- garden, was in L.A., had the number one show. Everybody loved him. He's a guest pop-in, and he murders, murders. So then he's like, who's next? And Jeff, the piano guy, God rest his soul, goes, uh, Steve Simone. And he goes, who? <laughs> and the audience laughed. Right. He goes, who? Ooh. And he goes, Steve Simone. And he looked at the audience and he said, I have no idea who that is. And they laughed. And he went, I don't have no idea who that is, but I know how tough it is to get a spot at this comedy store. He goes, it took me years to break into this club. And if you this kid is stage. funny enough to be on this stage, that means he's funny. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to sit in the back of the room and watch him. I want you to give him like all the risk. He made it so he was such a nice introduction that I had a great set. Oh, good so guy. Louis, Louis did this for you. Yes. Oh, that's cool. It was very cool. Wow. How'd What's your set? Him? How'd your set go? Very well. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's actually headlining the garden in January. I think Bri, right. If you look it up, uh, L- Louis, Louis is back at the garden because He's been doing a lot of these podcasts and stuff like that. And uh, he's he's really putting himself back out there. And like Dom was saying, he sells all his tickets on his website. Wow. Everything. That cuts out a lot of middlemen. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Out. I'm sure he's got people running it for him, Dom. Yeah. But. And then, and then, and then he produced his buddies. uh Robert Kelly, he produced his comedy yeah. special, and you could get it on Louis's website. Right. So. He's funny. Robert Kelly's very funny, but very dirty. Yeah, Dom, they were just talking about you uh, on a podcast, him, Rich Vaz, and Jim Norton. They were talking about the uh, the show you were on with Bill Burr when he did the rant. Yeah, that, was, that Philly rant? I'll tell you what happened was Jimmy Schubert comes up to me. He goes, I fucking bombed out there today. I said, they, 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 he goes, they wouldn't even let me talk. I said, well, Jimmy, if you, you only can't, if you can't talk, you can't bomb. They're just sort of waiting for uh, Norton to come up. It was the, uh, was the, what's the name of that radio show? Opie and Anthony. Opie yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Opie and Anthony. Well, Nor- yeah. Norton was saying he closed that show. He yeah. And followed he followed Burr. Yeah. He followed he Burr. Because, no, but at least one between him and Bill. Yeah. But Bill was after me. I go up there, I'm doing a set, and it's, some people are booing. Like maybe 300 out of 3,000. Not really bad, but they were drunk. You know, like, hey, listen, to, and I told them, look, I said, I know, I know you have like a ACDC t shirts, you live in your mother's garage, and all this shit. I said, but I'm making $10,000 for this t- 10 minutes. And you're, you know, and I started going into them. And then they started booing the crowd for booing me. But it only lasted like a minute. But look, he, he gets pissed at. I mean, he gets pissed, and then Bill he comes out. And he goes, you, he says to me, "They're booing Dom Herrera. Fuck them." He's telling me, and I said, "Bill, it's okay. I got out of it." But thanks, you know, fuck you, fuck them. So he went up with this attitude, 
I go around and I sit on, on, on a big sound thing. I'm sitting there. Uh, uh, and it starts and I, uh, I was fucking crying. I was crying laughing. I mean, he said, and by the way, fuck the Liberty Bell. And I remember saying to my girlfriend, what did the Liberty Bell do? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't bother anybody. What, what does that say about the Philadelphia people that they were laughing and loved him? All this mean shit he was saying. <laughs> but it, it was funny, though. He was brilliant. It was such a moment. That you know he couldn't, you can't do that again. You can't do that. Like he said to me a couple of weeks later, you know, I'm not doing that gig anymore because every time I go there, they want me to lay into people. Mm-hmm. And I said, mm-hmm. that was just one once in a lifetime moment for everything. And the, the people weren't even in Philly, they were in Camden. Camden, yeah. So, you know, I, somehow that sounds even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, Camden actually has one of the best G steaks around. Tell him, Simone. Donkeys. Donkeys. Uh, Simone, ever... you have, you've never been Simone? No. 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 Come on, Steve. Seriously. No, I'm serious. Right. I gotta go. If we we should go around Thanksgiving if you guys are if if you're up in up in town, we should go. I'll be back at Christmas. Okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah, like or next song. week. I'll be there next week. What are you talking about? We'll go next week. Dom, you coming home for the holidays? You gonna no, come? No, no, I, I want to come home, but I don't have the money. <laughs> I spent all my money on pe- gifts for people who brought us food. There's one of them. <laughs> yeah. Steve, thanks for coming on with us, buddy. Thanks, Thank Steve. You for me. You're the Good best. Steve Simone, everybody. Yo, Dom. Thank you again, Steve. Guys. Uh, Thank you, guys. God bless. Adios. Always a pleasure to be you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be here next week or not. I go week <laughs> to week now. Love you, man. Bye. Keep it Love clean, all right? Yo, Dom, over here. Hey, Hey, Dom, hey. Yo, Dom.